This morning at the uh, breakfast table, the Cameron family had a rousing discussion, as usual, about um, what makes a man a good father. And the verse that we're about to read um, certainly addresses that. And I take comfort from the fact that for my friends who are not as fortunate as I am, that no matter what your life circumstances, we have a Heavenly Father who loves us um, unceasingly and without limits. So the Old Testament reading comes today from Psalm um, 112, verses 1 and 2. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandments. His descendants will be mighty on earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Here ends the reading. Thank you very much, Jennifer. That's a great lesson. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of our wisdom. And the title of the message for today is just a good expression of love. Fathers, we love you. And the Apostle Paul, he tells us when he writes the first letter to the Corinthians in chapter 11, verse 1, he opens up his letter saying, follow up my example as I follow the example of Christ. If we read from this other translation in RSV, it says, be imitators of me as I am of Christ. So, brothers and sisters, the Apostle Paul here, he sets the standard for us to follow Christ. When he teaches us that we have to follow, they had to follow him as an example of the one who followed Christ. And then, as we want to follow Jesus Christ, either as fathers or just any other person, we want to be humble. We want to be servants. That is all about Jesus' example. Many times as fathers, we are not humble enough to understand that our kids they have many things to teach us. Our kids, they have things to teach us and we have to pay attention to their lessons. And now, as fathers, God has given us a powerful role to fulfill our position as fathers, as we remember what Jesus Christ did for us. We have an important role to be fulfilled. God has commis commissioned parents, or specifically fathers, to be the spiritual leaders of their family. Sometimes we exercise that, sometimes not. We were lifted up to be the spiritual leaders of our families. And that is important, whatever we realize that or not, that it is important that is important for us to understand. Because when we do not exercise the role to be the spiritual leader, I'll tell you, somebody else out there is going to take that role. And this is why we have in this world in our community and all over the world, we have children connected to the gangs. The gangs, they know very well how to attract kids, how to attract youth. And that is important for us to be paying attention to that. Even if we are no longer parents, but we are grandparents, 
and we are great grandparents, we still are in charge of that, to conduct and to guide our kids according to God's word. We either lead our family closer to God if we act accordingly, or we may lead our families to be further away. But as Christians, it is our responsibility to lead our families to be closer to God. We can greatly bring a good influence on our children for good. And so when we pass on to our children the heritage, the legacy of God's love, they will be able to follow the Lord. What is important for us to notice as fathers is that the most important thing for them is to follow the Lord, not, not necessarily to follow us. From our parents, from our grandparents, we have to learn and absorb what is good. What is not good, that is part of human nature. So let us take advantage of what is good from our parents, from our grandparents, the legacy that they left for us. They are not, many of the kids out there, many of the sons and daughters, they are not doing well right now. But I'm sure that one day, if they had the seed planted in their hearts, they will come back to you. Maybe when they become parents, they are going to understand how you love them. But do not be frustrated if your son or if your daughter is not honoring you as a father today. Just pass that unto the Lord and He is in charge to guide them. Before being our kids, they supposedly are God's kids. I'll tell you a real story from one of our friend's family. That family, they came from Brazil. I, I think I shared that long ago with you, but now the picture is different. They came from Brazil and the, the, the father was educated as a very strict person. His education followed his father's pattern, so he was edu educated according to the old standards. When he got married, what happened? They had two kids, and the kids were born here. When they went to school, they did not understand what is all about freedom, and they did not accept their father's instructions and later on to make this story short they left home one became a kind of homeless the other one was involved with the gangs in los angeles and then guess what they hated their father that is too bad but God is able to change the circumstances. I talked to that man, my friend, last week, and he said to me, I spent my vacation to go back to one of these estates close by, where his youngest son was uh, attending to a specific school, to be recovered from drug and all those things. He stayed there for three or four years and now he is back home, recovered. That is only by God's grace. And the oldest one who was in rebellion, finally 
he accomplished his dream. Now he is serving, he is part of the Navy in San Diego. He has been trained. That was his dream. And guess what? God arranged everything so that the boy now came back to his father and told his father, I love you. That's amazing how God changes circumstances. The oldest one came back to him because just because God satisfied his dream. When he was rejected to be part of the Navy about two or three years ago, he was really mad. But now that he was accepted, he's happy he came back home and he said that to his father. How God is able to change all those circumstances then my point is, it not depends on us to be really good fathers or really bad fathers. Our example, our guidance is good because we are in charge to guide our kids according to God's patterns. But even if we are not doing good, be sure that the Lord is in control. And long, long ago, the Apostle Paul prayed for another church, for another group of people in Ephesus. And he said, I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. It's all about God's work. When God created humans, he established a pattern. God's plan for humans, especially for families, was to let his blessings flow generation down generation. That is all about God's plan. When he created us, the first thing he did was to bless us. But he wants us to bless our kids, our grandkids, our great-grandkids, so that his blessings are going to go down generation after generation. So what is our task as fathers? It is to bless our kids and be blessed as God's plan is fulfilled. Actually, the Hebrew culture says, when one is blessed from infanthood, he or she has a feeling of being well accepted by the parents and feels loved and also that their parents care for them. That is part of the Hebrew culture that we absorb as Christians. As we bless our kids when they are still little kids and throughout life, throughout their journey and our journey, they feel they, we care for them and they feel they are well accepted. Even when we get marriage, if our parents bless our marriage, our union, we have to be sure that such a thing makes a huge difference when we bless our kids when they get married. So, this is part of the Hebrew culture. And when it doesn't happen, what, what takes place? They do not feel secure, they feel insecure and they when they come to their teenagers they need some kind of help why if we find children out there who are in rebellion something was missing love love for sure was missing and we still have time to fix those things that we did not accomplish and the key is that 
Parents must bless their kids independently of their behavior. That is also something coming from the Hebrew culture. It is not because they behave well or because they have a good behavior that we have to bless them. We must bless them anyway. If they behave well, or if they do not have a good behavior. That is our role. So, those blessings received affirm them when they become adults and they are able to pass those blessings unto the next generation. So, always think about that. How affirming, how good it is. Doesn't matter how old your kids are. Doesn't matter if your son does not care for you today. If we do not do that some other days, today is a good motivation for us to call them and tell them how we love them. That is going to change the circumstances. That is going to show them what we are supposed to show our love. So my first purpose today, as always, is to honor God, our Heavenly Father. But I also want to honor you. I want to give thanks to God for our fathers. And I don't know how you feel today. But I want to tell you one thing for sure. God is the one who allows us and give us the opportunity to repent and to fix what is wrong from the past. We are not going to live on the past forever. We have to live the present and exercise the opportunity to forgive and be forgiven. So if something is wrong, today is our opportunity to call our kids even our fathers, and to bless them. This is my purpose for today. Let us close our eyes and pray. And in the end of this prayer, I would invite you to use your voice to bless your kids.